It's a delight to have you with us for our Wednesday evening worship service. Welcome at St. Paul's United Church of Christ, where God is still speaking. No matter who you are or where you're on life's journey, you're welcome here. Let us tune in for a message of hope, of peace, and of love. God's true love that is to touch our hearts. The best way God can touch and move us is when we pay attention, when we calm down, when we breathe deeply, when we relax, and when we pay attention to that music that helps us tune in. So let us do that right now to the tune of Christ is Made a Sure Foundation. Carolyn Patton will lead us on the piano. It's wonderful to be gathered and to open up to the presence of the living God, which is promised to us each and every day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yet we don't always feel joyful, do we? When I hear the beautiful music right here in the sanctuary, and I see the empty pews, I'm reminded of you and all of you whom I miss. I really miss you. And that gets me choked up a little bit, and I feel like tearing up, especially when I hear the music. So we come with all of our joys and celebration and gratitude for a sunny day that our basic needs are covered. But we also come with a heavy heart when we're hurting, when we're grieving, with all that weighs on us. We can come with all of that to the living God. For God cares, God understands, and God promised to be with us in and through it all. Let us sing right now and open up our hearts to the living God and invite the Spirit of God to help us with this opening up. Open my eyes. Let us sing.
That was one of the most beautiful prayers for illumination. It's just the invitation as we ask together to the Spirit of God to help us open up. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter. And it's part of the conversations that Jesus has with his closest friends, with his disciples. Jesus knows for sure that his time is limited, that he will be separated, that he will die. And that makes his disciples sad and clingy and wondering, and they do not understand. They just don't get it. So right at the beginning of the chapter, Jesus says, do not worry. Don't worry. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So God preparing a place for them, for us all. Then later in that same chapter, Jesus describes to them that even though he will be gone, they will not be abandoned. They will not be orphaned, but Jesus will send them, or God will send them, a comforter, an advocate. Let us listen to the words of scripture. Jesus says, if you love me and keep my commandments, I will ask the Father and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I, says Jesus, won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. On the day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading for today. Water. Water appears to us in various forms as liquid water, as you drink it and wash your hands with. It appears in ice form as solid, and it appears as vapor. When you boil something, there is the water vapor. It's the same water. The difference is just the molecules distance from each other and how active they are. The closer they are, in cold, in freezing temperature, that makes water solid ice. And the hotter they are, the more they mix with air and are beyond fluid, just floating around in the air. The one same water appears in various forms to us. It's the same way with God, that God appears to us in various forms. God as, in traditional ways, the Trinity has been described as God the Father, as the Son, which is Jesus, and as the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, one God in various forms. In a different way to understand it is that God appears to us as creator, and then we think of our bodies and all of creation around us as the one who shaped and formed and breathed the breath of life into us. That's how God is present as creator. Then as redeemer or as savior in Jesus, Jesus the one who became God real, embodied God, flesh and blood, incarnate, God like you and like me in human form and flesh, and 
God as the spirit, as the energy, as the comforter, as the dynamic breath, as the Acts of the Apostles describes it. Paul, when he talks to the philosophers in Athens, he says, in God we live and move and have our being. So God is in us, all around us, and we are in God. Everything is permeated by God and by God's spirit. And we participate in that, in that godly energy. So God, like water, as creator, as Jesus, as Holy Spirit. And that is the basis from which Jesus speaks. When Jesus says, I will leave you, it does not mean that God will leave you. But God, in a very specific appearance, shape, and form, in the form of Jesus, will leave the disciples. But it doesn't mean that all of God is absent. But Jesus promises a different form of God will be present. The Holy Spirit will come. He will comfort you. He will be with you. And some described the whole church history, the whole history of the universe in these segments. Beginning, Old Testament, God the creator. Then during Jesus' time, the time of God in Jesus present. And then after Jesus died, from Pentecost on, the time of the Holy Spirit. We do not have to separate it up like that. But God, not present in Jesus anymore in physical form, but present through the Holy Spirit as comforter, as advocate, as spirit, as breath, as energy in whom we live and move and have our being. The interesting thing about who God is and how God is is that we cannot separate the different appearances, the different shapes and forms in which God is present. There is actually a relationship in God, in God in the forms, in the shapes, in the appearances of God. There is a beautiful dynamic going on. And a very traditional, well-known Russian icon painter, Andrei Rublev, painted an icon of the Trinity as three persons co-equal sitting around a table and they point to each other. And the beautiful thing is in the original icon, it had a small mirror at the bottom. So when you approach the icon, you are drawn into and see your mirror image as being drawn in into God, into the Trinity. So being drawn in. Another image for this relationship in God is a dance. You have seen dancers. One dancer, a second dancer, and then there is the dance itself. And that is how you can describe what is going on within God, <coughs> excuse me, and how we are drawn into that dynamic love relationship. And Jesus in this passage describes that while he will be gone, God will be present in a different form. And love, love is the way how to connect how to enter this relationship with God. The actions of love draw us in to become part of God and to have God express the very presence of God in and through us. So the energy that holds it all together, the relationship, the dance in God is love. That love that became visible in Jesus Christ, 
in how he acted, in how he loved, in how he cared, in how compassionate he was, that same love that God showed by creating the universe and each one of us, and that love that is expressed through God's action of creator and of redeemer, as it says, for God so loved the world. God loves the world. God loves you and me. And that same love finds expression in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit divine that moves in us in which we participate. Through our loving actions, by expressing our love, we participate in God's loving dance, in God's relationships, in how God is present in this world, in our lives, and in our relationships. For God is love. That's how it's called in 1 John chapter 4. And whoever loves lives in God, and God lives in them. So will you join me in loving as Jesus did in being open for the love of God and receptive and to live in that love just as we live enveloped in the air, in the breath of God, in the dynamic energy of God. That very love is what unites us all, all children of God, all of God's creation, for all of creation is infused by God's spirit. And all those people, even the ones with whom we have a hard time to get along with. My prayer and hope is that you open up wide to that very love of God and participate in the love relationship of the very God who became visible to us in Jesus Christ. It's my hope and my prayer for you.
What a friend we have in Jesus. Our best friend, the one who has our best interest at heart. And that we can trust Jesus. That's the invitation that is the good news we have. And as we pray right now, let us do it with that very same confidence. The confidence of those who are invited to trust Jesus, those who can come to Jesus with what weighs on them, what worries them, and those who know that with Jesus we are in good hands, and those who struggle, we entrust them in God's care as well. Let us pray. Thank you. Thank you that you, O living God, became real and visible to us in Jesus the Christ who became flesh and blood like we, one of us, embodied your love through his actions. Thank you for him, for his life, for his ministry, for his legacy, and for his love. Help us immerse ourselves in that love and help us live and share that love with all those with whom we are connected, with all those who are longing for you, In a special way, we pray today for Violet Romaley, the mother of Gail Fisher, who is receiving hospice care. For the mother of Mary Dahlman, who lives in an assisted living facility, in a care facility. And for all those who receive care in nursing homes, assisted living facilities, in the hospitals, and by other venues. We pray for Earl, a relative of the Lewis family. We pray for Rachel, a friend of Joanne Lauer, who has been on a ventilator for 29 days right now with the COVID-19 virus. We pray for Brenda Keister, uh, one of our Rejoicing Spirits participants, who is looking for new caretakers for her. We pray for the Gardner family, the family of our nursery attendant, Tara Gardner. One of their family members was in a serious car accident. We pray for little Eliana Phillips, who will undergo heart surgery two days from today. She is 10 months old and has several other health concerns. We pray for Max a little preemie baby that was born very early. And Max right now has gained weight and is improving, but still in need of your loving care and healing touch. We pray for the Bowen family as Marty Bowen passed away. For the family of Judy Johnson, a friend of Penny Dollar who died And for all those whom we mention to you in our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the Christ. And with his words, we join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the living Christ bless you and keep you, comfort you, embrace you, and hold you in good hands. And until we meet again, may you sense the presence of the living God around you, 
in you and through you. And may the Holy Spirit shine on you. And may you reflect the Spirit's energy, joy, and passion in all you do. That's my prayer and hope for you. May it be so. And the people of God said, Amen. Till we meet again